A 33-year-old cave diver set out on her first dive exploration in Indian Springs. She enlisted the help of a more advanced diver and friend. However, while making their exit, a narrow passageway posed a threat to their safety. In Florida, there's a place called the Woodville Karst Plain. This place stretches from Tallahassee to the Gulf of Mexico and covers an area of about 400 square miles. This place is unique because it's what we call a karst landscape, meaning it's made up of rocks, particularly limestone, that can easily be dissolved in water. When rainwater or other flowing water comes into contact with this soft limestone, it gradually wears it away over time. Because of this gradual erosion, karst landscapes often have interesting features, both above and below the ground. Underground, you can find caves, hidden streams, and sinkholes. One of the ways you can access this extensive cave system from the surface is through a rather ordinary-looking pond called Indian Springs, which is located in Wakula County, Florida. This beautiful spring can be found on a private property south of Tallahassee, near the Bethel community. Don't let its appearance fool you because beneath this seemingly ordinary pond with a calm surface lies the entrance to the Indian Springs cave system, which is one of the most popular caves in Florida. This underground world goes down to at least 300 feet and extends for at least two miles. Therefore, before anyone can be granted access to dive there, certain requirements have to be met. This means the diver must have diving expertise, be specifically trained, and be able to use trimix breathing gases with a custom mix of oxygen, nitrogen, and helium. Apparently, for any diver to be able to meet these requirements, it means that they have undergone an adequate training that qualifies them to navigate the underwater world of Indian Springs safely. It is advised that those with less experience dive under the supervision of a qualified guide at all times. Ella Parker was a 33-year-old divorced storekeeper. She fell in love with diving while she went on a trip in college, and ever since, she's made it her life's mission to dive everywhere she finds a cave. To all who cared to listen, she always found a way to preach the gospel of the serenity of the underwater world. The day she became certified as a cave diver was one of her happiest, and she even threw a party. Ever since then, she had gone on almost 150 cave dives. One day, she read about Indian Springs and had since set her sights on the cave. However, due to the dangerous nature of the cave and the fact that divers must be supervised by qualified guides at all times, she sought the help of a friend who was a more advanced diver, Lewis. Luckily, Lewis was down for the dive, and they began preparations for the dive day. On that bright morning, Ella and Lewis arrived at Indian Springs and were prepared to enter the water. They walked toward the spring, which is a little pond that is visible in a clearing surrounded by trees. They walked toward the boardwalk that goes down to the waterside. After suiting up, they went over their dive plan again, which was to dive all the way to the Wakula Room, which is approximately 4,500 feet upstream. During their preparatory dive, they had set up stage tanks in different locations within the cave. Lewis dipped below the pond surface, and Ella followed closely behind. Slowly, they dove to the bottom of the pond, and soon they could see the cave entrance. When diving in Indian Springs, once a diver gets to the pond floor, they can see the cavern that eventually turns into Indian Springs Cave. Ella was amazed by the beauty she was seeing, and with Lewis still in the lead, the divers went through the cavern, leading them into a tunnel. This tunnel went on for a couple hundred feet until they got to an area known as Squaw's Restriction. At this point, Lewis looked over at Ella and asked if she was fine. She gave a thumbs up signal to indicate that she was okay, so they continued on their journey. Right from the Squaw's Restriction, the cave began to grow narrower, so they had to be careful not to disturb the mud in that section which could lead to reduced visibility. After going on for a while, they got to a point in the tunnel that they had to slow down and go through one after the other with their equipment. Lewis went through first, and once he had exited the tunnel safely, Ella dove through next, and she ensured she was really careful. Eventually, she made it through. At the other end, she met a waiting Lewis, and looking around, she saw that the tunnel opened up to a series of windings. 
It was a spectacular sight because these tunnels are made of rough yellow and white limestone. It was a beautiful sight to behold. However, at this point, they ensured they were guided by permanent guidelines that were fixed in this section. The area is prone to silting out easily, hence the permanent guidelines, which usually cover the entire area. From here, Ella and Lewis go through the winding tunnels, and this was the pathway that would lead them to their destination. Later, they finally got to the Wakula room, which was a huge room. Ella was so happy that she gave Lewis a high five. It was more beautiful than she had imagined. They began exploring every section of the room. After a while, they began to exit. While diving back, they got to where they had staged their nitrox bottles and they picked them up. They still had enough gas to help them make their ascent successfully. At this point, one could think, what could go wrong? The divers retraced their path as they exited. When they got to a distinctive 500-foot arrow marker on the guideline, Lewis checked on Ella. Seeing that she was doing just fine, Lewis continued to lead the way. They dove through the winding tunnels, and the next stage was to head to Squaw's restriction through the narrow cave. Lewis dove through first, and it was Ella's turn to follow suit. At the Squaw's restriction, Lewis waited for Ella so they could continue on their ascent. However, he realized she was taking longer than expected. He began to grow worried. Still hopeful, he waited for a few minutes, and when he didn't see her coming, he decided to go after her. On approaching the narrow section, he was met with an unusual and unexpected sight. Right where only a single diver and their equipment could get through at once, Lewis saw his friend there, stuck. Her tank had been caught in a loose guideline, and with the limited space, she was unable to move around to free herself. Lewis thought about how this could have happened. He had not noticed this guideline earlier, otherwise he could have notified Ella. Distraught, he tried to see what he could do, but there was nothing. Furthermore, he realized the section was gradually getting silted out. In a bid to free herself, Ella kicked up some silt. At this point, their stage bottles were running out and would soon get empty. This was horrifying to think about. Lewis tried directing Ella on how to twist and turn, but it only resulted in more silt disturbance. And when he checked his pressure gauge again, he realized the air was getting critically low. With a heavy heart, Lewis had to summon the courage to leave Ella there and go seek help. He was hoping that a miracle would arise in this hopeless situation. He assured her that he was going to get help, even though she did not want him to leave her alone. Fear was quite visible across her face, and her eyes begged to be saved. Then, almost completely out of gas and with fear in his heart, Lewis raced up to the next set of bottles, which was a hundred feet up. He got there just in time, but despite making it to the bottles, his heart was heavy, and a sad feeling washed over him especially seeing the bottle that Ella should have used. He was horrified as he made his ascent. Immediately after Lewis broke the surface and got out, he raised an alarm, and the divers on the ground quickly gathered around him. He narrated the whole ordeal to them, begging them to help save his friend, although he feared she had already run out of oxygen. About one hour later, two rescue divers made their way to the section where Ella got stuck and their fear was confirmed. She had breathed her last, and her lifeless body was still held in between the narrow sections. Given the depth of the incident and the condition in which she was found, the retrieval of her body was complicated. After two unsuccessful attempts at bringing her out for two days, a much more experienced diver, who had done several similar rescue dives, was able to retrieve her body and bring her back to the surface. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.